screen. And yeah. <laughs> I think you're doing that one, bitch. <laughs> Hello and welcome. So today we are going over the Light Reaper cosplay build. As you can see, I've got the guy red. I've got some armor on. All the armor is the Light Reaper armor and some weapons, and he's kind of cool looking. And as we saw before, he's he's doing pretty good in the fights, as you saw in the previous clips. But let's go over them. So as you can see, I got both the right and left hand of the Light Reaper swords. Um, they're actually very important because these things have a special effect if you complete the Dark Crusader quest line. And just give it a second there. There you go. And then you can fire off one of those. Now, if you pay real close attention while you're doing it, that'll actually eat up soul flare charges. Um, but it's a really cool thing and it synergizes into the look. And I actually have to sacrifice the Kuchin quest to, to do this. But there are some flaws to it. Um, it can't be used in multiplayer unless the other person has met the requirements, is from what I can tell. When I'm other people's games, it seems to not work. Um, but other than that, because they haven't probably done the quest. Other than that, if you continue on, let's see here. Okay, we'll notice that I have all these three socketed out and everything. Um, you'll notice that they've got the gain health on striking enemy. That's the sadness one. That's the one that you can only find if you kill the big face boss after getting the the rune effects and then we got the queen catalyst here that comes from the quest it seems to be the best infernal catalyst in the game i was originally using a rogar heart because i thought it themed well but considering the fact that this guy is not only part rogar but also part umbral parasite like all the lamp bearers it seemed okay to give him a stronger thing um the light bear also buffs himself a lot um and throughout the fight you'll see him get red and everything else and you can see him enchant his weapons hence why i have all these buff things now cataclysm here cataclysm is on there because we don't have a riding dragon to use as the light reaper does so i use this as sort of my carpet bomb to make it feel like there's something attacking from above and as you can see there we have all the light reaper gear um, the Rogar's Delight for increased fire damage and holy defense, even though it doesn't say that, and the two uh, Queen Bears and two's rings. Now, with this kind of setup, I like to make it feel like it's a boss thing, so I have a tendency to shut off healing. Things like this are very nice, and they synergize well with that kind of concept. Uh, I like using the Slaughter's Conjurer there as a way to shut down healing in multiplayer. It makes the fights feel a lot more stressful and fun. It's really kind of cool, and then you just use the items. Um... Let's see here. Okay, so just go over the items real quick. As you can see, I have the Sanguinarix as usual. Um, the trio, the, both the trio things for healing health and mana. And the spine there, as you saw that I just had it on, which I used to restore my soul flare charges in the rare cases that I can actually use the effect. Um, that beam thing that I showed you, I didn't get a chance to showcase its damage specifically throughout this, but it actually hits really, really hard, especially at close range. Um, much harder than the actual spell. Um, Okay, so to go over the stats real quick for this, this is a level 68 build that I actually went through the entire game at level 64 at. I just had to switch it to level 68 to get, squeeze the Cataclysm spell into the build. Um, I believe I started off as the Condemned, uh, so my base stats are going to be 9 across the board. So I ended up bringing Agility up to 13, Endurance up to 15, Vitality up to 40, uh, which is the first, uh, well, second soft cap for Vitality. And Radiant stayed at 9 as well, and Inferno went to 35 so that I can actually fit the spell. Now, the requirements for the gear and stuff, I'm using more as... I'm using the upgrades I'm getting and stuff for more of the upgraded damage than the actual up, um, stats themselves. And I wanted to keep it low for low-level fights and stuff like that, and I didn't want people to feel like they needed some high-level character just to get through the game. Like I said, I got through the Umbral ending with this. Now this right here is me fighting um, a Ruiner just to kind of showcase um, some of the raw brutality this still has. I mean, I'm just sitting here face tanking things, dealing through his stuff, dropped a Meteor right into an attack. I mean, trying to fight that from another player's perspective too, it'd be, there'd be a lot going on. And then I came back again through it here. I've actually got a couple clips here showcasing a few things. So that first one there was to showcase kind of like just letting everything out. Uh, this one here kind of just showcasing if you wanted to run it as a caster, which will happen uh, occasionally when you're doing multiplayer. You don't want to get in close range. You can sit here and you can cast 
cataclysm on them. Uh, I'm gonna mostly aim actually with the big explosive fireball, but that was because I didn't have cataclysm yet. Um, I have other cosplays in the works too, like Bruner cosplay, but I haven't got them set up. Um, but as you can tell, you know, it works just fine as a caster, does decent damage with the Cataclysm there. I mean, th remember, this is all just a level 68 build where the main stats are all at the bare minimum. You need 13 to use the sword and 35 to use Cataclysm. And I only ever need 15 Endurance, like, usually. Endurance, I don't need the 20 that everyone keeps getting. It's just a waste of points as far as I'm concerned. Uh, especially with this one, um, this character's ability to gain a Rage Regen spell. Which nullifies any need for a high endurance. Um, as you can see here, what I'm doing here is I'm fighting without any buffs or anything going on. And I skipped it around a little bit to kind of show you just how terrible it was to begin with. And right here, I'm going to die. Now, this is important because when I die, I come back and you get all that humbled life, right? One attack, look where I am. Two attacks, I'm right up to max life. I didn't have to charge, I didn't have to heavy, just swung right into it, and full life again. And that is partially because, that is actually because of the Sibnosis I have. Essentially speaking, assuming that, I haven't checked the math myself, but assuming that the math is online, it's about 3% of HP per hit, that means each sword is giving me 9 HP per hit. So every attack, when I do wield, should be 18. Okay, so anyways, that's the lowdown of my build. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And I'm going to leave you with a bunch of uh, episodes of PvP over here, and I hope you all enjoy that. Thank you again for joining. I hope you all enjoyed the Light Reaper builds. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you guys around next time. Peace. Peace.